this is one thing for sure that will help you achieve your Australian dream faster, like quicker, okay? When we talk about skill assessment for Australia visa or Australian migration, it is one of the vital tools that will help you achieve a successful visa application outcome, okay? When you have a positive skill assessment, and you express your interest for any particular visa or you apply for any particular visa there is a high chance that you will get that visa once your occupation is needed in that region or state or territory okay even visa 482 also has skill assessment pathways so skill assessment pathways is for skill migration any migration that will help you settle in Australia, both temporary and permanently. We talk about Visa 190, Visa 189, Visa 491, Visa, every visa, apart from student visa and um, tourist visa and partner visas and so on. Even postgraduate work visa will require skill assessment. However, currently, postgraduate work visa is exempted from skill assessment but it's for temporal okay so skill assessment it is needed for most of australia migration pathway so the question is this if this is so much needed why not familiarize yourself with the process okay you do not require an agent you can do this yourself all the information you need is there in this video today, I will take you step by step on how to do skill assessment that is applicable to your own occupation. So after this video today, you'll be comfortable applying for your skill assessment, gather your documents and boom, you apply. Okay. If this sounds like something you want to hear, please sit back and let's dig in. Welcome to my channel, Jenkins Creation, where we keep it real. Thank you, my subscribers. And if you are new here, please do subscribe to my channel and become a member of this wonderful family where we keep it real. All right. Many of you have asked about skill assessment. And I'm sure by now you guys know how important skill assessment is to your migration journey to Australia so today i said let me show you step by step on how to do skill assessment in your occupation okay so to start with how do you find your assessing authority okay when you go to skill occupation list okay you find your occupation by the side of it you will find the assessing body i will show you for example the assessing authority for actors is vet assess if you click on vet assess you go to their website and all the information you will see about assessment you will find all right for the purpose of this video today we want to choose an occupation let's choose mechanic yes mechanic let's find out about mechanic the assessment authority and i will show you step by step on how you do your skill assessment okay so assume that this is your occupation now you will find the assessing authority okay let's go in there are so many types of mechanics you see that so many and you see all the visas this occupation is qualified for okay then we, let's talk about the answer code you see this one is tra okay if you click it you go to their website there's so many types of diesel mechanic your aero mechanic and so on okay but we are looking for motor mechanic once i find motor mechanic i will click it and we'll go okay all right let's keep going now this is um tra also i think all the mechanics and all the visas if you are a mechanic you are qualified for all these visas this is applicable to all the occupation they will list all the visas you are qualified for please some of them are onshore and some of them are for offshore as well 
if you watch my videos you will see all the videos i've covered so far all right let's keep going you see how it is written yeah yeah all right so i'm looking for motor mechanic once i find motor mechanic we'll go on with that yes motor mechanic you see that let's know about it click the number the ANSCO code it will tell you all the qualification you need everything you need and the type of job you'll be doing to be called a motor mechanic these are all the visas that a motor mechanic is qualified for all right i want to click on the ANSCO code because i want to know more about motor mechanic to make sure that i am also qualified for this all right so click on the number it brings you to another page okay the page will tell you about the qualification the job of a motor mechanic and when you are doing your assessment you will come here and make sure you copy the row you include all the rows that are mentioned here as a motor mechanic row okay say that a motor mechanic is supposed to have Certificate three, okay. This is equivalent to diplomas like HND or OND or TEF or a VET and so on. See the task of a motor mechanic. Make sure you incorporate it in your CV. Now let's go back to motor mechanic. Click the assessing authority. It brings you to this page. Voila. This is where you go, okay. Trade Recognition Australia is the authority that assesses motor mechanic and so many other occupations, okay? They have so many assessment services, okay? This one is job readiness, is not for you. Offshore skill assessment is not for motor mechanic because it has list of occupation. When you open it, you will see the list of occupation like plumbers and so on that can do the assessment under the offshore skill assessment program, okay? And they have various countries some countries are not included okay so what do you do you look for this one that is suitable for you all right if you are not sure click all of them and read you will find out by the explanation that is not for you and your occupation okay the one for motor mechanic is migration skill assessment that is it okay but before we go that because we have also offshore skill assessment i want us to go there and click so i will show you what i mean by that okay for osap program is for certain occupation and the occupation they list the countries that if you have a passport from this country then you can do this assessment program okay so for example in africa the only two countries that are there you see this for example, you see bricklayer, you see Brazil, China, Fiji, Hong Kong, India, and so on. They have Zimbabwe and South Africa. That's the only two African countries. They have United Kingdom, Arab Emirates, and so on. So each occupation, you see for chef as well. So if you're from this country, like you have passport from the listed countries, yes, you can go for this program. But if you are not and you are from offshore, okay, you need to go back and know that this is not for you. You don't have this occupation and you don't have passport of this country. Okay. So you go back and choose the right one. Okay. All right. Let's choose migration skill assessment. MSA. Voila. This is it. So as a motor mechanic, let's assume I'm a motor mechanic. All right. So let's go. Now, first of all, what I need to check here is that check eligibility okay search my occupation find it and say that this authority actually is supposed to assess my occupation okay check your eligibility for each assessing authority they have a guideline assessment guideline please read it thoroughly that will help you you do not need an agent to do this people are doing it every day okay so check your eligibility that is one thing you check make sure you have the documents they've listed all the documents they need how to apply okay see the online portal many of you will ask me where do i apply this is the online portal where you register and do your application but please before you apply for any skill assessment make sure you've gathered all the documents they've asked you to provide okay make sure you have them ready before you are 
application, okay? Then, after reading that, you make sure you read thoroughly again. I'm emphasizing on the guideline. It is very important, okay? So, the outcome of your application can be successful or unsuccessful. You can decide to appeal. I think they have 90 days, depending on the assessing authority, okay? I want to be going through this quickly so that when you finally find your assessing authority, you will take time to read. Everybody is not going to be assessed by Trade Recognition Australia, okay? You may have a different one. This is the guideline. This is the application guideline for this assessing authority, okay? For your own, please make sure you read their guideline thoroughly. All right, let's go through the guideline now. The objective, yeah, that's the first thing there application guidelines see the selection and everything they need they also explain the steps for application okay you register on the portal i've showed you a site for that a link when you register provide your document all the documents and everything and you do your submission okay upload the document blah 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 review your document and voila you submit your application documentation right documentation is important for your skill assessment please 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 do a good skill assessment and for referee when they want you to write your duties and stuff they will show you what exactly they want okay all right let's keep going all right so here they want passport qualification and academic transcript for each qualification you have and your employer okay completed employer template for this assessing authority they have a template for the employer to complete that is to show that you have worked in this place okay then documents any document that is not in english language please provide a um transcription okay transcription document for that qualification or any document that is not in english at this stage i know many people will be asking do you require english all right let's talk about the fees i'll talk about the english later so for the fees is 796 australian dollars for normal processing time if you want it quick it's 610 i'm sure you see that okay and they have refund policy you also read that okay now to prove your qualification they will explain to you how they want you to present your qualification to them, okay? They want all your final qualification and so on. Verification assessment, everything will be explained. When they are assessing you, they are looking for quality, you are the level of the qualification and the relevant. How is it relevant to what you have submitted, what you are claiming that you are? For example, if I say I'm a mechanic, the qualification I've submitted and my job experience how is it relevant to a mechanic okay the tax and duty of a mechanic also they will tell you how they want you to submit that okay yeah please read them very well i keep telling you you can do this just gather your document follow their instructions okay employment with an employer they will explain to you the proof they need from you okay they will explain to you what they need from you. Please, if you have excess, if you have more than what they've asked you to add, add all of them, okay? For people that are self-employed as well, they have pattern on how they want you to report all your documents. Just follow it. I told you guys, these things are self-explanatory. Stop being confused. Make sure you read the application guideline. Application guideline is your savior for your assessing authority for your assessment okay they have templates they have form for you to fill and everything and also a checklist when you do your application they will give you a checklist for example for this occupation any occupation that is being assessed by trade recognition australia they want you to have at least three years working experience okay full time okay and they want you to have worked for three years and if you work part-time they've explained how they're going to calculate it 
okay and for your employment history they want you to be recent like current okay so let's assume that you have had 10 years working experience or they assume three years working experience they want you to have worked 12 months like one year in the last three years okay so within the last three years you could have worked at least one year to show that you are still recent you are still current so for example this is 2023 if you stop work in 2019 2020 2021 2023 then you are not qualified but if you have stopped work in 2020 for example you are still qualified because it's still within last three years does it make sense all right so let's see the proof of employment they want you to submit these are the how they want you to submit your proof if you are employed if you are self-employed if you are employed outside of australia and if you are employed in australia so they have the table they explain to you what did i tell you everything is explained in black and white okay and again they will verify your employment they will they know how they do this thing they will bet me they will okay assessment outcome it can be positive if it's negative you can still appeal i think they have 90 days or 92 days window period for you to appeal and so on they say they have the responsibility to give you a good assessment and you you have the responsibility to do a good application and bring authentic information authentic information authentic documentation if things are fake you may be banned from doing anything be careful on the, your documentation okay you see you don't need agent but if you are using an agent you must write them to tell them that you are using someone before they can communicate with the person because they know that you can do this thing yourself okay but if you want to use an agent it's okay you can do that is your choice but you have to let them know okay let's quickly go to thread recognition australia frequently asked question before you start emailing them and asking them question your question must have been answered but you don't know maybe that question has been answered in the frequently ask question section okay that's very important that you check it we're going to go through it now i know some of you will be asking me do you need english for this trade recognition australia will tell you now whether they need english let's go so they've started answering all the questions but i want to quickly go to where they ask them do you require english so this is where they explain all their assessment pathways so that you will know which one you are qualified you see frequently asked question is also your guide after your um assessment guideline okay so this one is explain everything for you okay which occupation to nominate and so on i just want to quickly check the english i know many people want to know about the english language do i need english language voila i found it do i need an international english language test since they said no they said what no you do not need ielts out test results is not required for this assessment so for tra's program so if your occupation falls under tra as assessing authority voila you don't need english for your assessment but you will need english for your visa so that one is a different thing okay so when you've read all of these everything just go to the application portal which i have shown you before which you can find in any assessing authority they must show you where to click to apply just go there and do your application jj Lee. like do it do a good application okay and wait for the results all right so i hope i've answered your question this is applicable to all occupation find your assessing authority and go through the process okay this is just an example i use mechanic here so the same way you will go as a teacher as an accountant and so on and find your assessing authority and you do a good application voila and one day i will say welcome to australia now you know how to do skill assessment why not try that brings us to the end of this video if you have not subscribed to my channel please do so and let's keep keeping it real all right see you in my next video bye